Well, here I am on the 17th floor of the Fox Tower in, um, I'm not even sure what name of this town is, but we're on an Indian reservation in, um, in Connecticut. So Foxwoods, wherever, Ledyard, is that what it is? Ledyard? Anyway. Um, what a nice view. So clearly I'm traveling. Well, not really traveling. I'm at a conference. Tomorrow there's a conference that I am attending, a tech conference, and um, just part of my job. Anyway, so what I'll often do when I'm away from my away from home or I'm traveling or whatever, um, I'll often carry with me a knock around laptop if I'm going to be staying overnight or anything like that, and. I've always had at least one machine that I could consider dispendable, expendable um, or something that is not my primary workstation or my primary laptop that will still do what I needed to do. In this case, web browsing and, you know, answering emails. I hate doing it on my phone because I don't like I, I like a full keyboard. I like a nice big screen and um, 13 inch. Long story short, uh, this is my knock around laptop. I just put this one together um, from new old stock service parts. I'm an Apple service technician. Um, that's my job. That's well, part of a very small part of my job, but I am an Apple certified tech, so I have access to all the parts and the literature and everything that I need to keep these machines going. And um, we're at a point right now uh, where I work where we're starting to sunset or uh, end of life these MacBook Airs. And uh, this particular one is the last, the last of an era. This is a 2017 model MacBook Air. And uh, it is a 1.8 dual core i5 with 8 gigs of RAM. It's the end of an era for Apple. Um, because the model that replaced this was the 2019 model, which was initially an Intel, and then it became a the first M1 MacBook Air, which is what they have. Uh, it's actually that generation has now been replaced with the M2. But these were the these were the very end of one of Apple's best laptop lines in the history of the company, and I'm going to try to make that argument for you guys right now. Nobody buys Macs because they have the best processors or the best features or the best of anything, really. People buy Macs because they prefer Mac OS over Windows and would rather not tear their hair out of their heads uh, to force Mac OS on hardware that it was never designed to run on. We won't get into that right now. Um, Believe it or not, for my personal use, I can get by with Microsoft Windows. I could probably get by with Linux. But nothing runs iMovie quite like Mac OS, and I use iMovie to edit all of my videos, which is why I made the switch and kind of, well, I made it initially in 2008 when I started doing YouTube, and then I tried to go back to Windows and tried about four different basic low-end video editors, and none of them could compare to iMovie. So that's why I bought the M2 uh, Mac Mini for my, for my uh, home office. At work, we're mostly tri-platform. Well, we are tri-platform. We have Google Chrome devices, which have their place in technology, uh, in the in the in the tech realm tech space, we have um, a dwindling number of Microsoft Windows 10 machines, which are again they have their place in the market, and then we have a bulk of our fleet is all MacBooks, MacBook Pros, and MacBook Airs. As a service technician, I'm responsible for all of it. I think at my last count, we had around 4,000 devices, and I'm the only tech. Guess where I spend most of my time fixing? Windows, Chromebooks, MacBooks, not so much. 
they're bulletproof. Or they were. Well, the MacBook Air in there, anyway. So this is, I believe, the second generation MacBook Air. And it came in two sizes, 13 inch and 11 inch. And we bought, we started buying the 13 inch models in 2014. And there was a bit of a glitch in the matrix for Apple. They don't usually do this. This is very rare for them. They kept the 2014 chassis, basic nuts and bolts of the machine in production until 2019. Which means a lot of parts interchangeability between the entire run of this generation of MacBooks. That doesn't always happen. It rarely happens. With a few exceptions. Um, they had switched over the solid states to a different format uh, or a different connector, I believe. Um, sometime, I don't remember what year it was, but somewhere in the middle of the production run. The bulk of the machine, the parts that you would typically find that have failed due to um, abuse, neglect, etc., accidental damage, they're all interchangeable. The batteries, the keyboard and uh, the top case, the display assemblies, fans, I believe the fans, um, most of that stuff, screws, hardware, you know, that's that those little bits and pieces do matter. They're all interchangeable. The MagSafe board is interchangeable between the entire run. As far as I know, I haven't had to work on a lot of 2014s, but the 2015, 16, and 17s are the ones where I spend a lot of my time. And it isn't usually... Now, when one of these comes into my shop, it's usually because of a um, an accidental damage incident where somebody took a bottle of water and just dumped it in the keyboard. Um, I see that a lot. But, and that's what takes these out. But I have almost never had one of these just stop working because of a factory or design flaw, a factory defect design flaw or anything like that. As a matter of fact, screen breakages were pretty rare on these. Um, this is a very inexpensive screen for Apple to be using on a laptop. Um, it's well in terms of its construction. There's no there's no tempered glass over this. It's just a plastic coating on the polarizer and that's about it and again very rarely have i ever had to deal with a screen breakage on this generation of macbook air and we bought a lot of these a couple hundred in fact and we've been phasing them out over three years starting with the earliest of the 2014s why i think these are the best machines apple has ever made was largely due to parts interchangeability and serviceability Aside from having to have a, a couple of different sizes of Torx driver and the pentalobe screwdriver that Apple still uses to this day, surprisingly, um, these are very easy to work on. There's really not much to them. The bottom cover comes off with about six screws. Once you're in there, the battery comes out. It's got its... It, uh, the battery itself is a, is a part that you can buy, even today, from Apple. Um, and it's only about $130 retail, an original OEM battery. Um, there really isn't much in the way of special tools needed to work on these. You can work on them with basic tools, so you don't need to buy a, you know, a $900 battery press like you do for the M1s. Um, and I have that tool. <laughs> I have only used it once, maybe twice. <laughs> um, you don't have to... There's no T2 chip in this machine. So when it comes to replacing even major components like the motherboard or the display, there's no serialization between parts. It just works. The only thing you need to do is if you're swapping a logic board with a brand new one from Apple is you do have to serialize it and the general public doesn't have access to that tool, but I'm sure there's a hack for it. I've never had to look for that hack because I've never needed it. I have access to the correct tools and not many people off the street are buying brand new service parts for these which brings me to my next point so because i service these and i have since they were um, first brought into our organization in 2014 um, i have a backlog so every year 
I, we would have a little bit of money left over in our, in our budget, so I would use that money to purchase components that I would anticipate needing for the following year. Um, some of those components I have actually used, and some of them have just been building up in my parts bin. So I'll only buy, I generally, so the first batch of components was I bought a couple of fans. I bought a few of these, these plastic bars the, that mount to the back of the screen. The hinge cover, thank you, the hinge covers. Um, I would buy a, a, a lot of um, top case assemblies because we'd go through a lot of those. I'd buy track pads and, well, it came to a point where I, we're starting to end of life these machines and I've got batteries, I've got key, I, got, I had an entire set of keycaps. Apple will sell you an entire set of these keycaps um, so that you can replace keys individually, or if it's really damaged, you can replace the whole top case. So this machine um, is one that I had hand-selected from our inventory of outgoing machines. This particular one, again, is the end of line, the 2017, the king of the MacBook Airs of this generation. So I bought this one for myself, but I also went ahead and I had a whole bucket of service parts that I needed to use up because otherwise they're going in the trash. So I fixed up a couple of these machines um, to be like really superior grade. This is one of them. So this one, uh, I've got a brand new battery. I've got all new keycaps. I just picked them off one by one and replaced them with brand new ones. So this keyboard is brand new. <laughs> um, this hinge cover is brand new. The um, cooling fan and the MagSafe board is also brand new. You can see, if you look inside that charging port, there is not a faint hint of discoloration anywhere. Look at that brand new charge port, USB, and headphone jack. Um, the board that the cable that connects the MagSafe board to the Logic board is also new. Um, I believe all new screws on the bottom of the case. Why? Because why not? Otherwise, those parts are going in the bin, and we're not in a position to sell them off. So, But all the batteries that I had purchased, those are going to be reused um, in other machines, because why not? <laughs> so I'll prove it to you. Go to System Report, and go to Power, Battery. Um, I think I'm on my second or third charge cycle. Here we go. Cycle count two. <laughs> <laughs> condition normal um again you know these were one of the best machines that apple has ever made because they were very indestructible they're 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 i've seen these come into my shop with corners bent like this at 45 degree angles and they won't even close i've seen them where there's display assembly there's the corners bashed in half an inch and guess what it still works no broken screens nothing the only thing these are prone to is cosmetic damage because they're anodized aluminum, and anodized aluminum will scratch. Um, this particular one and actually had a case mounted to it originally. Uh, whoever it was assigned to this machine, um, they took really good care of it. It's got a few a little, little ding right there. I don't have any leftover display assemblies. Otherwise, I would have, I would have put one of those on, but those got all used up. Um, I have had a couple of screen breakages, but they were very few and far between. Why is that so important, though? And why are these better than the new M1s, M2s, and coming up M3 MacBook Airs? Well, because the new machines are stupidly fragile. The new screens are so razor thin. To make these machines even thinner and lighter, Apple sacrificed durability in a big way. The screens on the new uh, MacBook Airs are just stupidly thin, and there is a tempered glass sheet bonded to the panel that cracks with the slightest bit of provocation. Um, I had someone leave a piece of paper in their laptop. Like, imagine if this was just a sheet of paper or two sheets with a staple in them. She closed it, cracked the screen. That's a $400 repair. That's my cost. So if you were just a consumer off the street and didn't have Apple Care, that's an expensive repair. I believe the retail on that is like $600. 
which is dangerously close to the purchase price of an entire machine. Very scary stuff. Um, these cost us around 900 apiece when they were purchased new in 20, this one was 2017 for sure. Um, but the new ones uh, coming off the, the, the production line today, they're about nine, 900 or so. It's about the same price, but infinitely more fragile. Um, and I've actually had a couple of the new ones uh, come in with, um, with, with major issues. I've already done a logic board on a brand new machine that was purchased uh, two months ago. Um, I've had to do, I, oh my God, the number of screens that I'm replacing nowadays, now that we have the new MacBook Airs, um, all the way back to 2019 when that particular um, basic chassis layout was, was developed. Um, it's insane, it's insane. Um, but these are great machines. If you get your hands on one, they still have a couple years of service life. Now, they max out at, on Monterey. So Monterey is it. But you still get security updates for a couple of more years. And Google Chrome still supports it. What more do you need? You know, I mean, it does everything that you really need a Mac to do. And these are very cheap. Um, these are very inexpensive. And they're one of the best laptops for the money, I think. Again... You don't buy a Mac because it can run Call of Duty or whatever game you want to play that week. Um, they're not gaming machines. These are productivity machines, and they really are great at it. As far as you know, and, and a little bit of a little bit of a uh, hindsight in managing a fleet of these uh, this generation, anyway. The batteries on these things are insanely great, um, as Steve Jobs would say. They do last a long time. Um, and they and they actually do fail at a nice gradual curve. Um, I mean, all laptops have an ex they're expendable. They have a lifespan. Um, but I'm finding that Mac I'll pull a MacBook Air out of my pile of old MacBook Airs, and I know that battery will probably still go for about an hour or two, um, as old as these machines are. I figure a brand new battery. Uh, these things would go um, about seven hours or so, maybe a full work shift on a full charge when they were brand new with battery management enabled. So that is um, something to really look at when you're looking for a decent knock around machine in 2023. Price, does the battery work? Does it run uh, the current uh, web browser? All three check. Of course, these do have Bluetooth. Um, they do have Wi-Fi. I'm going to log into my Foxwoods guest room uh, thing here. Let's see if that works. Why don't I, I clicked it off? There we go. And then it'll open up a web browser window. Connect. The wonder of it all. I love these MacBooks. Um, I, and I'm really going to be sad when the last one leaves the building. Um, I really, really, truly will. You know. And we're getting to that point now. I'm, I've been selling these off to staff members to help put money back into our budget and um, that's how we're getting rid of them we're not scrapping them we're selling them off um but and there you have it so yeah this is one that was kind of refurbished from a bunch of new old stock parts that i had lying around that i needed to use up and um i mean even these one of the best trackpads ever used on a laptop or ever included were these 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 trackpads i love them they're accurate um, this is before they went to haptic feedback, so they're just a basic trackpad, nothing fancy, but it has a nice feel to it. It's made of glass, tempered glass, I believe, um, and the keyboard itself, this is, of course, before they went stupid and started putting butterfly keyboards and everything and quickly reversed that decision, thank God. Yeah, there's no touch bar. You don't need a touch bar. I hate the touch bar. I had one on my, uh, my work laptop for a while. And um, I hated that laptop so much because I would be, as I'm typing, sometimes my fingers would be in the wrong spot and I'd start adjusting volume and I'm like, I don't need this. The touch bar was a neat idea. One of those, it was one of those, like, it sounded like a good idea at first, but it just, it, it was a failure. And I'm glad that Apple has 
gotten rid of the touch bar because like for example if somebody walks into my office and i need to lower the volume because i'm listening to uh, to music or something i'm like oh shit now i gotta click here boop 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 oh, now i can lower the volume <laughs> oh come on just give me keys that's all i want that's all i want i'm old i'm 39 i can't i can't handle this stuff anymore but anyway this is um yeah i'm, I'm one of my favorites and I've worked on every Apple model, um, pretty much every model they've ever had uh, released. Not every version, but e one of every machine type. And the MacBook Air is always going to be my favorite. Um, having to do a battery in an M1 or M2 MacBook Air or Pro is just, um, it's hilariously complicated. And yes, to do it by the book... Um, you have to use a $900 tool to properly set the adhesive. Why? <laughs> Why? I mean, it, it, at least they make it so that you don't have to replace the entire top case like they did with the MacBook Pros of yore. But um, just, like, come on, Apple. <laughs> but they really hit the nail on this one. So what am I using this machine for? Mostly, uh, this is going to be my traveling machine. Um, like, for example, rather than bring my work laptop, which is probably what I should have brought, I brought this. Because the work laptop is a 16-inch MacBook Pro. It costs $2,500, and I really don't want to see something happen to it. Um, I didn't pay for it. My company did, but that's neither here nor there. This thing here... It's worth about 150 bucks. If it gets stolen, lost, broken, who gives a flying fuck? There you go. That's pretty much where I'm at. And yet, it still has an illuminated keyboard. I mean, I like it. If I were into gaming, I wouldn't be buying a MacBook Air. I wouldn't be buying a Mac. Just, I mean, two different markets, guys. You know, so I, I see a lot of comments on my YouTube videos where um, I'll get, a, I'll, I'll get a, a user who says, well, Macs suck. I will never buy a Mac. They cost too much. <sighs> yep. Yep. I get it. I get it. Um, totally. But in terms of, um, you know, as a good work laptop, like, something for productivity purposes. Um, I would rather give my users a Mac, even though they cost more, even though they're not as powerful or they don't have as much. All right, I'll give you this. Apple charges too much for RAM and they charge way too much for storage. They're trying to push their cloud services, their iCloud storage device, device, device. Yeah, I don't mean to say that. They're pushing the iCloud storage model. I get it, and they're charging a premium for for um, for solid state uh, storage and, and and RAM. Yes, I get that, hundred percent. I will not argue with you, but it's you know you get what you get. You know, if you don't like it, buy a PC, buy a Windows machine, see how that works out for you. You know, or just buy a, a Windows machine and throw Linux on it. You can do that too. That's the thing you can do. Um, but I, um, from a support standpoint, I have almost zero issues with any of our Macs. And we have several hundred of them in deployment right now. That the only thing that I deal with now, and, I, and again, kind of backtracking a little bit, is the lack of durability of the modern uh, MacBook screens. They're just, they break so damn easily. And yes, they do have failure modes that are ridiculous for their price point. What do you do? You know, if you want a Mac, you got to pay the Mac tax, the Apple tax. I will say, personally, I've only uh, I've I've only owned smart um, for smartphones. I've only owned iPhones. I've owned like four of them. I've never had one break. I've never broken a screen. In the 10 years I've been using iPhones, I've never had a problem, not one freaking problem, not one issue, not one bad port, not one problem. They have been absolutely flawless. And I've owned four of them. I buy a new one every, about every two years. 
So do the math, whatever, you figure it out. And yeah, I don't mind paying the extra money for something that works. But Mac OS is not flawless. I think we know that. I'm not saying it's flawless, but what I'm saying is in terms of being the lesser of three evils, I will take Mac OS every day. And um, I will die on that hill. Yes, I will. Um, at my house, I've got a Windows desktop that I use for my live feeds, which I'm now going to be using this because it just it's more convenient. I can put it anywhere in the house and run a live feed on it. I tried live feeding on my phone, and it was a disaster. Um, just a, just a disaster. It just wasn't, the phone is not a good live feed, like where you can communicate, interact with people and no, it's, no thank you. No thank you. But anyway. All right. Well, that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching. And uh, I'm going to continue using Mac OS. I don't care what you say. Um, Windows 11 though, I haven't really used Windows 11 yet but I'm sure it's just as wonderful as every version of Windows that came before it. So, And the adoption rate is so bad that there's probably a reason for that. So anyway, y'all have a great one. Here we are in my dad's garage. So let's just see how she performs on a YouTube video. Um, not bad. You're not gonna get full quality though. Granted, I'm on a public Wi-Fi access point too, so that's also a thing. But, um, I don't think I can pull 720p out of it. Let's, uh, let's see. Eh, yeah, that's not too bad. So yeah, we're streaming from a public access point in a hotel, and we're getting we're getting 720p. But oh, that's okay. That's that part. So let's try to fast forward a bit. Here, let's just zoom through that was um a little that, that that particular video is really crappy that cutaway there that's from uh that's from a long time ago here we go yeah that's not too bad i mean come on now for a machine that was designed or, or released in 2017 with what was then kind of weak specs i mean it's better than a chromebook <laughs> i'll give it that it's better than a chromebook but for 150, which is what I'm, what we're selling these for, um, that's not bad. That's about what they go for in eBay. So, anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching. So basically, trade shows are like Halloween, but for adults.